Hello Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and Cross Watchers. This is your tarot and oracle reading for the month of August 2024. So let's dive straight into it. We have the Hermit coming out in reverse as your major arcana to represent this month ahead. And this is showing that perhaps you're going to be spending a bit more time to yourself this month. And sometimes that can be a little annoying because it's like if all of your friends or family are busy and you're feeling like alone, but I want you to make the most of this time. I, I feel like I wasted so much of my own time in the past when I was like a teenager really being sad and having this fear of missing out instead of using my alone time to like the maximum potential when you are alone when everyone in your life is busy like I now I'm starting to really savor that feeling honestly uh, because that is the time where you can just do whatever the heck you want you can watch a bunch of TV shows, you can read a bunch of books, you can go out and and just get yourself a nice whatever you want, a nice beverage and go shopping, like whatever your thing is that you enjoy doing, you can do more of it when life is less busy. And whenever the hermit comes out in reverse, to me, that's like life is a little bit less busy for you this month, but that is such a good feeling that I feel like should be savored. So make sure you're doing that. Also with the hermit in reverse, you could feel like certain individuals are not really being as friendly to you as maybe they once were, or you may be feeling like they are moving on from you. And that could be a little weird because, you know, you may enjoy the feeling of having a friend. I think it's always so nice to have someone in your life that you can just like rant to and, you know, have weekly meetups, you know, talk about what's going on in each other's lives and, just support each other in that very like low key casual type of way. It's so beautiful. And when those people suddenly start acting too busy or they're not around, I can understand how that can make you feel some sort of way. So you could be experiencing some of that as well, but you know, it'll, it'll all be good. It'll all be fine. Second card out, we have the staff coming out in reverse. All right. And this talks about bringing your will, your desire down into physical reality. This talks about making your dreams a reality. And so when this comes out in reverse, make sure that you are taking the physical actions that you need to take in order to get yourself to where you want to be and be in the environments you want to be in, around the people you want to be around. And if there is any ambitions of yours, goals of yours that you heavily, heavily want because it's like on your heart so much, make sure you're taking inspired action. You know, you're not just sitting around waiting, dreaming. You're actually bringing it into fruition. That's what I want to say to that. And some of you may also be feeling like, well, what's next? What should I focus on here? What is my next? Like a little list list, you know, like I don't know what to do. I don't know what to focus on, especially if any of you have gone through some major sort of life change, like say you're recently like an empty nester, your children moved out or retired or so many different things, you know, maybe you're on some sort of leave from work or even vacation. If you're somebody who works really hard, you're a type A person and you have some time off, you're just like, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> you know, I think you'll find something, you know, L look to see where your passions lie. Okay. Try to focus on that or things that are in the back of your mind. Like, Oh, I always wanted to do that. Those are the things that your intuition is saying, go do this. There's a lot of life in this direction. So that's been one of the biggest messages that's been coming through in readings for like this past few weeks. We have let go coming through beautiful with the root chakra color here, groundedness. And I love the yellowy orangey leaves here because August is a month where it's like the final month of, to me at least, the final month of summer. And then September, October, November, it's really starting to give off that autumn, back to school, Halloween, pumpkin spice energy. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I grew up in uh, Northeast United States and the autumn season is just so magical. All of the leaves change colors. And I know it sounds so corny, but literally like, yeah, the flavors, like pumpkin flavored things. I don't know, it just makes me so happy. Maybe I'm a stereotypical white girl for that, but like, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm starting to get that like autumn joy, autumn magic coming through in your reading, even though it's still August. Some of you can't wait for that sort of season and you may be planning some sort of autumn excursions. And I don't want to disclude anyone in the Southern Hemisphere who's like, it's I'm literally heading into spring. Like <laughs> it's literally getting warmer. Like I get it. I get it. <laughs> but 
whatever season may be coming for you in the upcoming months, I feel like you're sort of planning some events, some excursions or trips, vacations, things like that uh, this month for that. And this says, once you let go of the outcome, you'll be able to release all the emotional constraints that have held you back in the past. Trust in the higher good and guidance of spirit as we have only your best intentions at heart and we'll do everything in our power to protect you. Very beautiful. So especially when that comes out with the hermit in reverse, to me, these are two signs that together sing the song of perhaps it's best if you release and let go of anything that is acting in resistance to you at this time. For example, if you have a friend that is just not seemingly as interested in the friendship, maybe it's best if you just release, let go and stop trying to force it, stop trying to make plans and try to enjoy other areas of your life. Like friendships come and go guys. Like I gotta be honest with you. They come and go. That's why it comes up in reading so often. Like, Oh, there's someone exiting your life. There's always going to be people coming and going. I feel after years of doing these readings, after like a little bit over a year of doing these readings for you guys, these particular readings, the weekly readings, I can pretty firmly say that friendships come and go, people come and go. That's just the nature of reality. And there's so much magic to behold in so many different personalities, so many different people. And yes, it's beautiful to have lifelong friendships and family members, if that's even possible. But um, there's so much more that we can discover about ourselves when we allow ourselves to discover other people, because every single person on this planet brings out a different part of your personality, different notes of your personality to create different versions of you. And really what we're doing when we connect with others is getting to know ourselves on much deeper levels and understand ourselves in, on much deeper levels. And that's why your relationship with self is the most important. That is why, you know, so many philosophers have this idea that there is only one entity and we are just under this illusion that we're all separate. And under that illusion, we can enjoy the different notes, the different flavors of ourselves as one entity and be under the illusion that we even hate some parts of ourselves or hate other people, dislike other people. But in reality, we're all one. Um, I don't know why I'm getting so philosophical here, but yeah, I, I just feel like there are so many, there's so many types of people, um, cultures to be discovered, friendships to be made out there in the world. And, and life is beckoning you to live it to the fullest. And if anyone is seemingly drifting away from you, that's the nature of life. That's the nature of reality. Don't let it burden you. Don't let it get you to a place where you are saying, everyone leaves me, blah, 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 blah. Get out there and start talking to some people. Get out there and be more friendly. Get out there and experience life. Because what I'm pr I promise you, when you go out of your comfort zone and you do that, you're no longer in a place of being bitter. You know, when you experience a lot of loss, which is a nature of reality, guys. It is the nature of reality to experience loss to experience endings, but you're not ex going out and experiencing those new beginnings. You are resisting putting yourself out there. It can create you into a very bitter person. Have you ever met those old people that are really bitter, really resentful? That's what happens when you don't go out of your comfort zone and you don't expose yourself to new people, new ways of thinking, new experiences. You just become very bitter because all of those years of experiencing loss and betrayal, heartbreak, trauma, whatever, are extremely out of proportion with the amount of new beginnings, new doorways that open. But the thing that people never talk about is like, you have to open those doorways yourself. You have to go out of your comfort zone and, and do something like that makes you a little antsy, makes you a little nervous. Like going on a first date, for example. I've talked to a few people who want nothing more than to be in a very happy, loving relationship, but they are terrified to like meet anybody in a way that isn't quote unquote organic. So for example, like if they don't meet someone through a friend or if they don't meet someone that they like already know and start dating them, they don't go out and like talk to new people or go on first dates with strangers. For example, that's something they would not do, but it's like, okay, if you don't like where you're from, <laughs> if you don't like your hometown, if you don't resonate with your current friends or the group around you, like you have to go out of your comfort zone in that way. I don't know. I don't know. It's just food for thought, guys. Food for thought. <laughs> we have six cards here, two rows of three from the Murder of Crows tarot that we're going to read into. 
we have the high priestess coming out in reverse as your first card there are truths here that you are not seeing okay i think for some of you you can see very clearly that someone or something in your life just wasn't really hitting it right like they weren't really vibing with you in the way that you wanted them to i think you guys what i'm seeing is like a, a friendliness like you're almost giving golden retriever energy which is very unusual for taurus i believe um golden retriever energy towards certain individuals that you really love and really like and i feel like kind of similar to how dogs think <laughs> and i mean this is a compliment you wanted to see the best in that person but you were kind of blind to the fact that they kept like ignoring you or um, perhaps not really working with you or giving as much as you give, you know. And I feel like the truth of that is trying to reveal itself. Like if someone just is not putting as much effort or enthusiasm into a connection with you as you're putting into it with them, it's time to see that. We have the strength card in reverse. Yeah, guys, I feel like these two cards, high priestess and strength in reverse next to each other, it's like you're not wanting to see the reality for what it is because the reality of it is not as pleasant as the the beautiful warm glow you've casted over it you're wearing rose colored glasses is what i'm trying to say here is what i'm trying to spit out wearing rose colored glasses towards a certain relationship in your life towards a certain situation in your life whatever it may be it doesn't have to be a person but it's just not good you know it's just not good for you i don't know what else to say it's just not good for you okay Third card out, we have, oh my gosh, death, exactly. Exactly, it's time for this to leave, it's time for this to end. It's coming to a natural end, and I think you're gonna accept it because you're gonna you're gonna realize very naturally around this time and this month, like, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna force, force this to work, I'm not gonna force this to happen and develop, like, okay, if you wanna go, go. I'm not going, it, I feel like you guys have a lot of magic, a lot of ability to manifest in your bones, in your soul. And you were using those threads of magic to sometimes hold relationships together that were not wanting to be held together. Does that make any sense? It's like, I think you know, at the end of the day, like you could easily use your magic, your manipulation, and I say that in a neutral way, not in the weird way, to win someone over and have them become your best friend and or have them, you know marry you or be your life partner whatever like i feel like you know you could do that if you really wanted to with your magic however you don't want to do that you know because who what kind of joy would you get out of you know using your subtle magic and manipulation to win someone over who is very much at a different vibration than you and naturally resistant to this connection you know, why would you want to do that? And so I feel like you're just releasing, you're letting go, you're letting these golden threads of your magic that's been holding together something, you're releasing it. You know, I feel like you're like letting, literally letting it go, letting it go, <laughs> letting it untether itself and letting the vibration of the people or situations in your life go to where that vibration will be matched for them, to the people, the situations, etc. And by letting that go, by releasing those threads, you're taking your magic and your power back, first and foremost. You're going to find yourself less exhausted, more focused. And also, the things that are in alignment for you right now at your current vibration will now be able to enter your life because you're not holding something or someone so close to you that is not a match for you. There's more room in your life now to welcome people, situations and outcomes that are much more aligned with you. We have the hero font coming out. Wow, we're four cards deep out of six and all of them are high, are high priestess as well. All of them are major arcana cards. This is a very, very, very significant month for you. And the hero font talks of being a spiritual leader. Okay, sharing your wisdom with others. So I do see you guys being in a position of authority, spiritual authority, whether you are a therapist, a teacher, a professor, a scientist, you might have an apprentice, someone learning from you, or you just might naturally be this person that in your daily life, you give a lot of great advice to your friends, 
a lot of wisdom, mother hen energy, okay? And that's very valuable. And I see you stepping into that position more and more. And this is coming out right underneath the high priestess in reverse. It's funny <laughs> because people like you and I who are spiritually connected, you know, you could give like award-winning advice to anyone in your life. You could tell them exactly what they need to do in order to be successful, in order to be happy. And you have the same ability for yourself. Like, you know already exactly what you need to do to live a successful, healthy, thriving life. But that doesn't mean you listen to it. <laughs> you know, there's always those people that are like, okay, if psychics are real, then why don't they all win the lottery? Because a lot of people with good psychic abilities don't listen to it when it applies to themselves. You know, we ignore the red flags. We ignore the messages. And I, I really feel this awakening. Spirit has been like hounding this message um, through readings for like the past few weeks here of like listening to the list that is in your head of things that you should be doing. Because that is like the number one way that your intuition is speaking to you. Okay, like so many people are like, how do I differentiate my intuition from my anxiety? Okay, what is the list of things in your head that you should be doing? Quote unquote, should be doing. Like, I should do this, I should do that. I wanna do this someday, I wanna do that someday. That is your intuition's action plan for getting you to wherever you have set the intentions that you wanna go. Okay, so all you have to do is start taking action on that, whether it's big or small. And you're listening to your intuition, you're taking action on it, and you're going down the right path. That's how you listen to your intuition. It feels right. It's something that feels aligned with you and for you. Whereas your anxiety, it's the opposite. It's your intuition telling you, this ain't it. <laughs> this is not it. Or your anxiety can also sometimes be unrelated to your intuition. It can strike up if, you know, you eat the wrong food sometimes. It can strike up if you have bad experiences that have similar traits to neutral or good experiences. So you might get anxiety, for example, when having close relationships with people because you've been hurt in the past. You know what I mean? So your intuition always is something that you know is good for you, right for you, you should be doing, etc. Even if that comes with fear, even if that comes with anxiety. Okay. I'm seeing like healthy amounts of nervous energy this month, nervous energy in the sense of like, like good nervous energy, like first date or an interview at a job that you really want or a test that you're really excited to pass because then it'll like change your life or going out to a class for the first time. And you've never really done something like that in your adult life or like, let's just say you have a friend and you never met any of their friends or family and they have a get together and they're the only person you know and you're going to that get together, you know, that type of nervous energy, which is good because th this is the type of nervous energy that preludes big doors opening for you, a lot of different doors opening for you, doors as in potential new friendships, relationships, experiences, um, opportunities, things like that. <laughs> We have the Emperor coming out because why wouldn't we have all major arcanas this reading? This is organization. This is being in your divine masculine energy and in control of your life. For sure. It's looking good. I'm also seeing better sleep. And then final card out. Of course, your one and only minor arcana card. The Seven of Wands. Protecting your peace, protecting your energy. And I'm seeing this literally as like not fighting anymore, not fighting for the relationships, the people, the situations that don't fight for you. Like, okay, I'm not going to try to force it. I'm not going to try to chase it. I'm going to chase the things that want to chase me, my dreams, my goals, beautiful new experiences. That's what I'll chase. That's what I'll defend. The people who are here for me effortlessly. That's what I'll defend. That's what I'll support. That's what I will pour my service into. Very beautiful. So this, uh, this month is a very interesting one. I feel like there is a, definitely a lot of letting go. You literally have the death card and let go. 
And specifically, you're letting go to things that just aren't strong enough to stand the test of time. With strength and high priestess in reverse. You didn't want to see it before, but you're seeing it now. It's just th certain individuals don't have what it takes to be in a long-term friendship or relationship. Certain situations don't have the foundation of being in your life long-term. That's what you're releasing and letting go of. And you're creating strong foundations within yourself, within your own life. Okay, I just held up the Hierophant. I meant to hold up the Emperor. There you go. They all kind of look similar. You're, you're becoming strong with a sturdy foundation in your own life and taking action towards the things in life that you know will lead you in a positive direction. Thank you so much for joining me, Taurus. Definitely watch for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs to get the fullest overview of this month ahead because there's certainly more to your month than just this. Like this video, comment how it resonated down below, and subscribe to the channel if you've not already. If you want a personal reading with me one-on-one, -on -one, the link to that is always in the description box, spiritpsychic.org. I also offer my intention oils there and spiritual life coaching sessions there, so check it out. Bye-bye.